What's going on, everybody? It's your boy back at it again. All right, and today we're going to be talking about UFC Fight Night Dawson versus Green. As you can see, I'm going to be going over my predictions. Uh, I got a few underdog picks and I got a few locks on here that I can't wait to share with you guys. Before I move into that, though, I would like to say thank you to you guys for supporting the channel so much recently. Okay, my last video. I was saying, you know, maybe we can hit 300 subs, but now as you can see, we're getting close to 600. So I just want to say thank you guys. Uh, I'm super thankful for it, and I couldn't be happier about it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting more confident in my videos now. I'm getting more confident in being consistent. And, uh, you know, you guys are showing me that I, I can make this happen. So uh, I'm going to keep putting on and keep coming up with good ideas for you guys. So yeah, thank you one last time. I really appreciate it. Okay, starting off with the first fight here, guys. I'm going to be taking the underdog in J.J. Aldrich, okay? Neither of these fighters have insanely impressive records, you know what I mean? I think they've both both have lost uh, a few out of their last few. Uh, J.J. Aldrich is coming off a win, though, so just for that alone, I kind of favor her for momentum because if we go to De La Rosa's record, we see, you know, she's about 1-3-1 and one in her last five. So, and, you know, she hasn't had a win since 2021. Now, I think that that speaks volume, so I will be taking the underdog of J.J. Aldrich, okay? Now, moving on to the next fight. We got Nate Maness versus, or Mateus Mendonca. All right, guys, Mendonca hasn't had a win in the UFC yet. I have these guys' records over here, and uh, we see, you know, he had a, a round one knockout over on the Dana White Contender Series, which... That's really good, but then he lost a decision to Javid Basharat. Now, I don't think that this is a horrible loss to have. I think Javid Basharat and his brother, they're both pretty good, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not fully on the prospect train for them yet, but I think they're definitely worth uh, keeping their eye out for. And I know one of them is fighting at UFC 294, so I'm looking forward to that. But, you know, Nate Maness, 3-2 and two in the UFC. Um coming off of two losses, again, to some good competition, Tagir Ulanbekov and Umar Nurmagomedov, understandable. But damn, only two strikes in this one. I think I'm going with uh, Matias Mendonca. Mendonca. For some reason, I feel like I'm saying that wrong. I don't think I am, but yeah, I'm taking Mendonca in this fight. Um, blue hair, power, let's go. Uh, all right, moving on. Vanessa Demopoulos versus Kanako Marada. Murata. That's her last that's a sick last name. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I've heard of Vanessa Demopoulos, but not Kanako Murata. But I'm gonna pick Kanako Murata, okay? Not much thought behind that one, I'm not even gonna lie. But yeah, moving on rapidly, we have the, the, do you guys know how to say this name? Aor Ikuleng uh, <laughs> versus Johnny Munoz, okay? All right, both of these guys are two and three in the UFC. All right, uh, you know that the Aor guys. I don't know. You know, a good uh, a first round TKO win. That's good, of course. But a competitive decision with Jay Perrin. I don't like that on there. You know what I mean? Johnny Munoz, like I said, also two and three in the UFC. Uh, only finished once, so that that's not horrible. Um, and also they. Uh, both have a finish and a decision in the UFC. So this is a fight, guys, that I feel like is honestly a bit of a coin flip, and I feel like that's reflected in the odds. I'm going to go with Johnny Munoz, all right? Now, moving on. Okay, Carolina Kowalkiewicz. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I feel like I've heard it said like that before. I'm just calling her Carolina, okay, versus Diana Belbita. I'm going to be picking Belbita to win this fight, okay? She is the underdog, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, she is. And I'm picking her to win just because, you know, listen, all respect to Carolina because, look, she went on a horrible streak here, right? Five losses in a row. Um, granted, you know, most of them were decisions, but, you know, five losses is five losses. You know, that's that's Tony Ferguson streak numbers. Um, but she's bouncing off of a three-fight win streak, you know what I mean, which is uh, pretty good. She was able to turn it around for herself. Uh, however, the reason I'm picking Belbita, because as we can see, you know, two and three in the UFC, 
not the most experienced fighter, even though they do have similar records, actually. Um, nonetheless, I'm going with Belbita to win this fight because of the age and just, you know, the, the new generation of fighters versus the old, okay? Carolina is 10 years older. She's 37 years old. Belbita, 27. So, I, <laughs> you know, maybe it's not the best reason to pick this fight, but everything else is damn near even. You know, Belbita does have the height advantage as well. So I'm taking another underdog here. I'm going with her. I think she'll win this fight. Now, Felipe Linz versus Ion Kutalaba. Guys, Ion Kutalaba is an anomaly, right? Because he's always, you know, one fight away from the chopping block and just being cut from the UFC, and then he wins, you know? Um, if his record would pull up here, you guys would know what I'm talking about. But if you're watching this channel, I'm already assuming, oh, what is this? Come on. Man, let me fix this real quick. Okay, sorry guys, I don't know what happened there. My internet has been kind of going in and out during the recording of this video. But nonetheless, back to what I was saying, okay? Ion Kutalaba, not a very impressive record, okay? 17 and 9, uh, a lot of losses back to back. Um, you know, he's coming off of a window. It's safe to say if he were to lose this one, it probably would have been over for him. And uh, same situation when he beat Devin Clark. So, you know, he's he's hanging on by a thread here. But I must say, he's a very dangerous guy in the first round. You know what I mean? We see two first-round finishes right here. We see a first-round finish over Khalil Roundtree Jr. That's a, that's a pretty good win. And, um, yeah, you know, so I'm going with Ion Kutalaba to win this fight in the first round. I just think he's a really, really dangerous first-round fighter. You know what I mean? Uh, this guy, Felipe Linz, two, three decisions in the UFC. He's won two of them. Uh, one first-round knockout over, you know, a, a dying OSP. So, yeah, I'm going to pick Kutalaba to win this fight. Is he the favorite or the underdog? Uh, he's the favorite, okay, by a little bit. I'm sticking with Kutalaba. I think he's got this. Um, not much else to be said about that. Moving on to the main card, okay? Alexander Hernandez versus Bill Algeo, okay? Now, I, long story short, I'm picking Alexander Hernandez. I don't like that he keeps moving up and down in weight classes. You know, I think his last fight against Jim Miller, right? His last fight was Jim Miller. Yep, which was at lightweight, you know what I mean? And I think he's going back down for this fight. Yep, 145. And I, I just don't love that he's going up and down and up and down. And, um, you know, he's kind of a, a coin flip fighter. I was going to say prospect. He's not much of a prospect anymore. But, you know, as you guys see, he kind of trades wins and losses. And he's coming off a win, which, you know, usually would mean he's due for a loss. But I do think he's going to win this fight. I think he, do, he does have power in his hands. I know that Bill Algeo is uh, also coming off of a finish recently. Oh, no. Am I going to have internet problems again? Something tells me I am. Oh, no. Come on. Whatever. <laughs> um, but, but, yeah. I mean, my message is still the same here. I'm picking Alexander Hernandez. Uh, he, you know, he's not, he doesn't have the size advantage, but I think he has the power advantage and uh, the experience advantage. I'd be able to say that confidently if this would load, but it's not, so whatever. I'm picking Alexander Hernandez. Who's the favorite? He's the underdog, guys. Another underdog that I'm picking. And I'm not just throwing these out there to be like, oh, I want to pick the underdogs, and if it hits, I'm cool. I, I think he's going to win, guys. Um, the only thing that scares me is he's back at featherweight. I think lightweight is his division. That's where he should be. Guys, moving up on the card, Drew Dober is back looking like a Chad. Oh, my God. Look at him. <laughs> Look at that. He looks like a Chad, man. He's he's buff as hell. Versus Ricky Glenn, not as Chad looking, not as cool of a chin. But you get what I'm saying? I think Drew Dober is going to win this fight. And the odds agree. I know he's a heavy favorite. But Ricky Glenn is a huge step down in competition compared to his last fight where he fought um, Matt Frivola. Matt Frivola unfortunately cracked the Giga Chin. And, uh, you know, if you're really tapped in, you, you might know why. Um, 
I'm just saying, look at the color of Drew Dober's opponents and who he lost to. Anyways, guys, I'm moving on rapidly. Ricky Glenn, you know, although he does have the power, and I don't mean punching power, that Drew Dober uh, really likes and he doesn't like to hurt these powerful guys, I think he's going to win this fight. It's just too much of a step down in competition. Uh, he, Oh, Bill Algio's record loaded finally. Whatever, way too late. Uh, but yeah, Drew Dober, three fights, three KOs in 2022. You know, one loss this year so far. But, you know, Matt Favola, that win, I feel like it's going to age pretty well. He's a beast. And yeah, Ricky Glenn is not a beast. <laughs> um, so Drew Dober is going to knock this guy out. Probably within the first two rounds. I'm saying Drew Dober wins inside eight minutes. All right, now moving up on the card, Alex Morano versus Joaquin Buckley. This is a great fight night, guys. I'm, I'm interested in basically all of these fights. Anyways, I think Buckley is going to win this fight. Okay, when I look at their records, you know, you have Alex Morono who uh, is coming off a guillotine choke over Tim Means, but I think he was losing this fight up until uh, he got that guillotine, you know, so Tim Means was kind of piecing him up. Um, and then, but he was way ahead against Santiago Ponzinibbio, which um, is not a bad win. He's not who he used to be, but not a bad win, you know. Uh, first round TKO over Donald Cerrone. That was his last finish before Tim Means. Um, you know, pretty good win. At, but, of course, it's kind of this dead body of Cerrone. And, you know, Alex Morono, he has a lot of wins in the UFC. He has a lot of experience. So I do favor him in regards of that. Who's the who's, – okay, Buckley's a favorite. But Buckley, this is his second fight at 170. And I like him at this division. I think he's really powerful in this division. Now, granted, the guy he beat, Andre Fialho, that guy's chin is not too good. <laughs> but, you know, Buckley was piecing him up and caught him with a head kick in the second round. The only thing that I don't love about Buckley and his style and why I think Alex Morono uh, might win this, I think if Morono wins this, it's going to be by decision, by the way. Uh I don't think Buckley really has a method to the madness. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying he doesn't game plan, but I don't think he goes into the fight with a super solid game plan where he's like, okay, I'm going to go in there and impose my will. He has the physicality to impose his will, but he doesn't really do it that much. I don't want to say he's a floater. You know, he doesn't just float around out there. But Buckley, no method to the madness. I hope he can come in here and impose his will. I think if he does, he's going to knock him out. I think his power at this division is great anyways, and I think he will catch Alex Morono and finish him by TKO in the second or third round. Late second, early third. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, maybe within 12 minutes of the fight. How about that? Moving on up the card, Joe Pfeiffer versus Abdul Razak Alhassan. Am I saying that right, Al Hassan? I read these names all the time, guys, but saying them out loud, I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't know if I'm saying that right. All right, Joe Pfeiffer is going to win this fight, guys. I know he's the favorite. He has to be the favorite. Yeah, he's a, he's a heavy favorite, and you guys know why, right? He's coming off of a win over the greatest middleweight of all time. Oh, no, guys, my internet is being a bitch again. Are you kidding me? Oh, no, it's not. Never mind. Okay. I like that. You know, besides this one loss to Dustin Soltzvis, which has not aged well. Dustin, I don't want to say he's a can, but he's not a great fighter. Um, but that was on the Contender Series, you know what I mean? Joe Pfeiffer is a problem. I like Joe Pfeiffer. He's coming off of a win over the greatest middleweight of all time, like I was saying, Gerald Mearshark. We're not going to click on Gerald Mearshark because he's undefeated. You guys know that. You don't need to know. He scared Hamza away by pulling guard. On Hamza, 17 seconds into the fight. Do you guys remember that? Um, but somehow Joe Pfeiffer ended up beating the middleweight GOAT, Gerald Mearshart. So, <laughs> obviously, I'm, I'm playing around a little bit. Uh, I, no, I'm not. What am I talking about? You know, Abdul Razak Al-Hassan has been on and off recently, uh, coming off of a TKO win over Claudio Ribeiro, which, you know, that's not bad either, but he also lost a split decision to Joaquin Buckley at middleweight who's also on the card interestingly enough i'm picking joe pie for guys I, I don't think i have to explain myself too much there um i'm sure majority of you are picking joe pie for he has every advantage and 
I, I would say if uh, Abdul Razan loses this fight, I'd say you know, I don't see any abs. I think you can go down to welterweight. You know what I mean? <laughs> you guys know based off of my uh, my heavyweight video, I think everyone can kind of go down a weight class. Um, not not everyone, obviously, but you know, hopefully you get what I'm saying. If you if you watch that video, you know what I'm saying. Moving on to the main event, guys. Grant Dawson versus Bobby Green. I, I don't think there's much to talk about here, guys. I think this is a mismatch. I, I do. Um, as far as, like, matchup-wise, they are very similar, you know? Um, not in records. Not in the rankings. <laughs> but in reach and in height, they're the same. But I think Grant Dawson, like, he is really hitting his stride right now. You know what I mean? Not that he had anything to come back from as we see he's undefeated in the UFC and he has some great wins in here you know Demiris Magulov I was really impressed with this win you know besides that you got your Mark Madsen win you got your Jared Gordon win you know a win over uh Julian Orosa in his second fight you know that's not bad either but I like Grant Dawson to win this fight 20 and 1 undefeated in the UFC compared to Bobby Green who is coming off of a win over Tony Ferguson uh, I, I actually think that fight was not real, guys. That fight was uh, AI-generated because uh, Tony Ferguson, he, he's about to fight Habib. He's on a 12-fight win streak, guys. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> lost to Drew Dober, lost to Islam Makachev. Understandable. Uh, you know, the, the Dober loss makes sense. You know, the Islam Makachev loss makes sense. Um, before that, you know, a decision over Nazarat Hakbras uh, and a a TKO over Ally Quinta, but I'm going way back in time for that, guys. Just going off of recent performances, man, I'm going with uh, Grant Dawson, just like you are. If you want to hear how, I think he's going to win by second round submission, okay? I think he's going to get the submission in the second round. I think it's going to be a rear naked choke, and yeah, I, I like this fight. Like, this is a fun fight. A weak main event, but a fight that kind of just doesn't really make much sense. You know what I mean? Um, I think the UFC was like, damn, Bobby Green beat Tony Ferguson, the the 12 fight win streak about to fight Khabib guy. Let's throw him in the rankings. I think it's a mismatch. I think Grant Dawson's going to win. Bobby Green has a puncher's chance. Okay. Respectfully. And with all that being said, guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what your picks are in the comments below. And one last time, for those that are sticking around, thank you for the support on the channel, okay? I'm not going to lie. I get a little more nervous now when I drop videos because I don't have 50 subs anymore. You know what I mean? There's there's a few people that are going to watch the videos no matter what, and I appreciate that so much. Uh, I'm not going to let those nerves get to me. And uh, the, the good outweighs the bad so much in the comment section. You know, I reply to all you guys if I have something to say. And if not, I usually heart every comment. Um, yeah, I fuck with you guys so much. Thank you for fucking with me. And, uh, yeah, I hope this video doesn't kill my channel momentum because it's not like a slideshow video. But, you know, that's my picks for you guys, all right? Some underdogs. Oh, oh shit. I didn't say who my locks were. Oh, man, because there are some locks on here. Grant Dawson is a lock. Joe Pfeiffer is a lock. Drew Dober is a lock, and that's about it. <laughs> Those are my locks for the night, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.